and welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to work cables in the Intarsia method. This cable and this cable are exactly the same except that I work the cable legs in a second color on this swatch. So it takes it from this which is very pretty in itself but then you go to wow. So this is how you do that. I'm just going to use a smaller sample of a cable to teach you rather than working that big one, but the concepts are the same. So let's zoom in here a little bit. This is a little cable. The actual cable itself is 10 stitches wide. Um, in order to uh, avoid a bulky cast on, I cast on fewer stitches. I cast on one stitch for each of the uh, cable legs. So we're going to cast on fewer stitches here. And I did that, so we have to cast on, for this particular one, I have two edge stitches, two knits, and so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have my ten stitches cast on here. They were cast on like this. And then the first row is going to be a wrong side row for this particular cable. It depends on your cable that you're working. The first row could be a right side row. But you start with the first number, number one, and if it's on the left, that means you're going to work the chart from left to right. And it's a wrong side row. All the numbers that are on the left indicate wrong side rows. All the numbers on the right indicate right side rows. And you can see that the cable crossings are always worked on a right side row. So the first row is going to be um, this row right here, a wrong side row, and that's where we're going to add in our second color. So what I have done, white's going to be my primary color, and I chose orange, or kind of a golden color, to be my secondary color, and I just tore off a piece of yarn. This one's about um, three foot long altogether, folding it in half, and I'm going to start with the folded end. And so one leg, one yarn, will represent this leg over here and the other arm of the yarn will represent this leg. So that way I don't have two ends to weave in here. If you're hearing noises in the background, it's my two schnoodles that are playing on the floor under my feet. They're very happy doggies. So, let's start. So I'm on a wrong side row and I have my two edge stitches which are not on this chart, okay? And I'm just have I'm having a border of two stockinette stitches on each side, so I'm going to purl those stitches first. And I'm working this in the continental method. Um, what I'm teaching you here is not knitting. I'm teaching you how to work with a second color. So the method is the same whether you're a continental knitter or an English knitter. So now we're at this stitch right here, which is a purl on the right side. That means it's a knit on the wrong side. And then the next stitch is a knit front and back on the right side, but a purl front and back on the wrong side. And that's going to start this leg. So I'm going to bring my white to the wrong side of the work, and I'm going to start with that halfway point of my gold yarn. And I'm going to have it on the wrong side of the work. And I'm do it, going to do a purl front and back. So this is creating the two legs that will turn into that half of the cable. Then I'm going to work another knit front and back, but this is going to be in my light, my white color. So I drop the dark, this is my tail, down. I pick up the light over the top of it, always over the top, whether you're on the front or the back, because what happens when you come back to do a right side row, let's get the tail out of the way, that traps this yarn so that when you come back to do a right side row, see how it's trapped? no hole will be created in that space. So then we're going to do a purl front and back. Another purl front and back. And then we're going to do a purl front and back with our second color again. I'm just going to carry this over and I'm going to do a purl front and back. And do you see that the white, the light yarn is coming down underneath the gold is coming over the top, and I'm going to purl front and back. So for each leg of your cable, you need a strand of yarn. The color that is your background color 
No strands, you're just going to work with one strand all the way across. No individual strands. Again, the just used color goes down, the new color goes over the top. And then we're going to have that one purl on the right side, so it's a knit on this side. And then two knits on the right side, so we're purling on this side. So now we've done our setup row. That's row number one. We're going to do row two. Here we are. So we're, remember we're having the two stockinette stitches. So our design that's charted here is right here. So we have purl one, two stitches of the leg, the four stitches in the middle of the background color, two leg stitches, and a purl. So we're going to do a right side row. So I'm knitting my two. And then purl one. I always bring the yarn firmly forward when I purl. That keeps you from having that enlarged knit before a purl. Then we're going to have our two leg stitches knit. So we drop the white over the top, pick up the gold from underneath. So the white is coming over the top, the gold is coming from underneath, and we knit our two stitches. Then we drop the gold over, over the white, pick up the white from underneath. Let me move my finger. Drop the gold. Here's the gold coming over the top of the white. Pick the white up from underneath and we're going to purl these four stitches. Now we're going to drop the white over the second leg of the gold. And you can always check to see which leg you have. Just pull on it a little bit. It should move this stitch right here. That was the last stitch worked. It should move. Then you have the correct yarn. We're going to knit two. Drop it over the white pick up the white from underneath, purl one, knit two. Now we're going to turn and do a wrong side row. So now we're on row three. You know, in the YouTube videos, you can always speed the videos up. So if this is too slow for you or too fast, go to the settings button and you can change the speed. You can also stop the video and move it forward or backwards by moving the little bar at the bottom of the screen. So we have our, that's the purl on the front, knit on the back. Now we're going to knit these two stitches here. See the yarn, the gold yarn, the white goes over the top, gold underneath, knit two. Boy, my dogs are having a good time down there. I'm sorry about that. But they're so darn cute. Okay. They play, 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 play all day long. One, two, three, four. Those are our center. And then we have our, we drop the white over the top of the gold, pick up the gold, and work the gold. Drop the gold, pick up the white from underneath. It goes over the gold. Purl one or knit because it's purl on the right side, purl two. Now we have a cable crossing row, the beginning of a cable crossing row, row four. So let's see how we do that. Now I use the cabling method. Oh, by the way, every once in a while you have to pull these strands through. See they kind of they'll tangle here. Just pull them through. I do it every uh, right side row. And I'll tell you a little trick after we get a little further here about how I add new yarn so I don't have tails to weave in. So now we're going to do row four. And it's a two over two cross with pearls on this side and knits on this side. So our gold yarn is going to move from this position over to this position. And I cable without a cable needle. I'll link a video uh, in the description and up at the top corner up here you'll see a link of how to cable without a cable needle. So here we have our two stitches. They need to move to this position over here. So I just take my needle and go through the back of the next two legs 
I pull the first two off and put them back on. Then I move the back two to the front position up here and I purl them. Now if you don't feel comfortable working without a cable needle you can follow the general directions for working with a cable needle. That is fine. Now we have to look at the back of the work. The gold yarn is way down here because we did that cable crossing. So we have to kind of look for it and you double check. You pull on it. Always pull on it. It's going to this stitch. It's the correct yarn. Because you'll see in a minute when we go to cross them in the center it can get confusing. So now we've transposed their positions. Now we need to drop that gold yarn and we're going to move this set of stitches to the front of the line. Again I have a video that shows how to do this and I'll link it. Now we just used this gold yarn. We just finished with that. That goes to this stitch right here and we want to pick up this gold yarn right here, right? Goes to this stitch. But the first one needs to cross over the top of the second one. Now, even though we have four gold stitches in a row now, you still need to use the yarn that goes with the stitches. Do not think you can just use one gold strand and knit across four stitches. If you do that, your remaining tails won't be in the proper position when you come back to work with them. They'll be lost and you'll end up with a very difficult time. Okay, so now we have our two pearls here and our one pearl on the edge and two knits. Now let's take a look. It's looking good. Let's look at the back. Back also looks very tidy. You can see on the back of this swatch, that's what we're expecting. Okay, the front looks nice. The back is going to look like this. This is where you have a two over two crossing. So the gold had to cover over two of the background stitches to get to the proper position. So you get this really pretty lattice work on the back. Okay, let's do our return row. This is a wrong side row. So the wrong side rows we just follow. Um, this is going to be the wrong side row right here. So we're just going to work the stitches as we come to them. That's what you do on a wrong side row in cables, unless there's a cable crossing on the wrong side, but I don't see that very often. Now, we have our light, and we have to pick up one of these gold strands. Now, how do we decide which one to pick up? We pull on it. Whoops, that one's going over there. That's not the one we need. This one's here. Yes, this is the one we want. Okay? This one right here that goes to that stitch. So it comes underneath the white. The white goes over. We purl two. Then we take the other gold and it comes over the top and it goes to that stitch. See it move? Even though there's four gold stitches in a row, this is what you do. Purl. Drop this one down. The white comes over both golds. Comes over the top of both golds. And you work to the end of the row. And the next row is going to be a cable crossing row again, where the two are going two golds are going to cross over each other. I'm going to show you that and then we'll be uh, towards the end of the video. We will have covered all the points at that time. So let me get some more yarn here. Okay, so we turn our work again. And at this time we're going to straighten our tails again. Just pull them through. Oh, at the end, after I do this row, I'm going to show you how to add new yarn to the ends of those strands because they do run out. Okay, so this is the row we're on now. We have our two edge stitches in stockinette, three purls, a two over two right cross, three purls, two stockinette. So that's what we're going to do. And the two over two right cross is with our gold stitches. So we're going to work over to the gold. And then we're going to do a two over two right cross. Come 
on, get on there. I'm looking at this through my camera, so it's two-dimensional. Okay, so now we just transpose those two stitches. So when we go to the back and we look for our gold, again we have to pull on the strands because we want the one that is going to be right there. Did you see it move? So that's the strand we want. Otherwise your tension will get off. There will be no connection between the stitches. You need to continue using the same strand for those two stitches no matter where they travel. Then we're going to switch to the other gold. It comes over the top. Knit these two. And then the light comes across both of them, comes across both the golds. Now let's take a look again. Isn't that cute? So there you have the beginning of an intarsia cable. Isn't that lovely? It is so fun. So that's how this was started. And see, this is where I cast on a double strand at the fold here, a double strand at the fold here, a double strand at the fold here. So one strand went this way, one this way, one this way, etc. And on the back, there's nothing to weave in there because I used the fold of the double length. So at this end, I have six strands that will be woven in at the end. Now, in the middle, when you run out of yarn, what do you do? Let's say, okay, now this strand's getting really short. I need to add some yarn to it. So what I do is I break off another piece of yarn from my ball, and I break them. I do not cut them, so you need to pull them apart, because what you want is that frayed end. You don't want it cut. On this end, you're going to unravel. Let's see, we have four plies here. So I'm going to remove half the plies, and I do that by pulling off a couple of inches. Not cutting, but you need to pull them off, because that frays the end, and it's more likely to splice together. Now, this is superwash wool, but yes, it will, whoops, I dropped my work. It will splice. You can even splice um, acrylic yarn doing this. I've done that. So here we have, let me get my needle settled here. We have two ends broken off, and these kind of jumped up, but jumbled up, so I just straightened them out. So we have two out of four remaining. And I do the same thing to this end of the yarn here, the one I'm going to attach. I remove about two inches of two of the plies. Now, if it's three ply, on one of them remove two, and on the other one remove one. Because the goal is, when you splice it together, is that you end up with the total plies. So here we'll have four plies. Let me zoom back out now and show me what, what I'm going to do. I put these in my hand. It's called spit splicing, but I don't spit. Okay, I just put them in my hand, and I rub them together friction very hard. I, I've got my hands going together very hard, and you can actually feel the heat build up. When it gets hot, you're good. Okay, when you splice, you need two of three things. You need water, heat, and friction. So you only need two of those. In this case, we're having heat and friction. And they will not be as beautiful as the yarn was, but they're good enough. And I will tell you, and see it's the same thickness. If you pull very hard on this, yes, it will pull apart, but you have to pull pretty hard. See, I'm pulling, it's not coming apart. And once you knit past this point, it will never come out. So on this swatch, I have spliced these six strands three times during this swatch, this much of the swatch. And when I have a strand, I have it about three uh, feet long because that's one arm's length. I can pull it out easy without doing a double pull when I'm dis, um, disentangling them. So you, you can't see where I splice them. It just blends in and it will never come out. Everything looks good. So there you have it. This uh, video is in conjunction with a knit-along that I'm doing. It's called It Takes a Guild Cardigan. 
I'll have a link to that down in the description as well. Feel free to join us. It is a knit along starting a sweater from scratch from a swatch. And all the things you have to do to design your own cardigan with a shawl collar and pockets. I hope you come back and join me. Uh, feel free to join me in my groups on Facebook. I have a group on Facebook called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. I also have a group on Ravelry, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. And I would like you to give me a thumbs up down there that likes my video. Leave a comment, share my videos with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care and happy knitting!